What's up everybody? That engine guy here. Today I am working on a Gen 4 6 liter LS engine. I have already actually machined this block. We did a parallel deck, um, plateau bore and hone. It's currently a 4.070 bore, so technically a 5 over LS3. It's all nice inside. I already put our coated cam bearings in. And right now I'm cleaning up the rest of this parts for this motor. It's going to be a rod and piston factory crank deal with some aftermarket LS3 cast cylinder heads. Right now I've got the parts in the wash and we'll start checking main bearing clearance while they're getting cleaned up. See how far we can get today. Okay, so these bearing clearances are too loose. So I'm going to swap a half set of one unders in. So right now we've got about three thousandths main clearance, which on a block that's this strong, that's only gonna make about 600 horse, is kind of loose in my opinion. Okay, fast forward a day. I now have a one under bearing in the block and the standard bearing in the cap. If you remember, my bearings were too loose with two standards. So we'll tighten them up and we're still pretty loose. So I'm going to go to a full one under bearing and cap and block. Okay. Full one under set of bearings in the block. There we go. That's what we want. Okay, clearance is now coming in. Thrust is still around through. The thrust bearings always have more clearance, but the others are now down to the 2.2, 2.3 zone, which will be perfect for this little motor. So, pull the caps back off. We'll lubricate everything, get the crankshaft prepped up and ready to go, and then we'll set her in the motor.
Okay, after the first stage of tightening, I'm gonna set the thrust bearing now, because right now the thrust bearing controls the fore and aft movement of the crankshaft, and the main cap has to be perfectly in line with the engine block. So with the bearing, with the main cap lightly torqued down, I'm gonna drive the crank to the rear and then drive it to the front, and that will line up both sides of the bearing with each other. Moving on next, now that the crankshaft is in, we'll install our timing set. This is really simple on these motors, just line up the dots on the two sprockets. Doesn't get much easier than that. What I just did is called shimming the oil pump. So this outer spur gear needs to ride inside this pump housing, but it needs to be equal. It needs to be basically in the middle of the pump housing and not rubbing on one side with a big gap on the other. So I take a two and a half thou feeler, two, two, two and a half thou feeler gauges, and I kind of insert them in a way that it forces the gear and the housing to become aligned. And then you tighten down and torque your bolts and you can pull your feeler gauges out and this gear now is perfectly in the middle of that housing with no friction on it. Now before reassembly, I just like to add a little bit of lube into the pump housing, a few different points. Then I'll get all the bolt holes cleaned out with brake clean, put just a touch of Loctite on the bolts and lightly snug them back down. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna check deck height so we can get the correct thickness head gaskets ordered. Okay, so we have our piston right here. It's got a small little pop-up dome on it. And all we're gonna do to check deck height is just drop this dude in here with no rings on. Like so. Make sure our gauge is zeroed out. Okay. And then when we check deck height, we don't wanna check it on the dome of the piston, as you can see right here. You wanna check it up here on the quench pad. And so we're gonna bring the piston up all the way to top dead center.
And then we're gonna take note where we are. And we're gonna rock it down one way. So we've got 10 thou and we're gonna rock it the other way. It looks like we have negative one thou. So come back up, actually about nine and negative one, uh, 10 to negative one. So we're gonna find the middle of that and that will be how much the piston is up out of the hole, which is about four and a half thou out of the hole on average. Now I'm gonna pop this piston out and we'll go to the other side. Can y'all still see that? Yeah. Get the same piston. Same thing, take it to top dead center, and then we're gonna rock it. Yeah, we're about five thou out of the hole. So, now that we know our piston to deck clearance, we can go and order our head gaskets. And with this being an iron block, the block's not, is maybe going to expand one thousandths. On the aluminum LS blocks, when the motor is at full operating, operating temperature, the block is going to expand so much that this piston will then be basically zero decked. It would not be five out of the hole, but, but because it's iron, it's not gonna move more than a thousand. So we can go ahead and go with a stock 51 thou head gasket. That'll give us about 45, 44 thousandths quench. Um, actually, we'll look at our compression ratio stuff. And at 45, we have room to tighten this up down to about 40 thousand and we might be able to squeeze some compression ratio out of it that way. Okay, that pretty much wraps up part one of this LS3 converted six liter engine build. Currently with like a stock LS9, stock LS3 head gasket, we're sitting right at 11.0 to one with the cylinder heads he wants to run, which have a 68 cc chamber. I'm gonna get with him and kind of weigh his options on do we want to go thinner head gasket? How much compression do you want out of this motor? What are the goals? We can either mill the heads down or squeeze it a little bit with a thinner head gasket because we do have 45 thousandths quench right now. So we can go down to 40, possibly 37, 38 if it's going to stay naturally aspirated. So I'm going to get in touch with him. We'll come up with a game plan and I'll see you guys next time.